So many blues, so little time. Ooh, sea monster. That sounds kind of interesting. Whispering wind. All right, so what's the plan for today? We're gonna obviously create something blue, a little bit of abstract, a whole lot of texture, and I'm gonna try to burn some more polyfiber paper. Yeah, I don't know, I'm just gonna wing it. That's the typical way that I approach my art these days. Actually, it's typically the way that I approach my life in general. So as always, my name is Tiffany Remine. Welcome to my channel. Let's jump off the proverbial diving board into the sea of blue. Maybe I'll stick the landing. Maybe I won't. Won't be the first time. And you know what? I think I'm okay with that. That's what it's all about. Willing something to existence that the world has never seen before. Possibly something they should never see. Keeping me sane. You know, like teaching a cat how to synchronize swim. Okay, so the first order of business is polyfiber paper. I'm gonna take all of my blues, hang on, here they are. I grabbed them all and I'm going to line them up and roller them on. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside to dry. It doesn't take all that long to dry, maybe half hour, 45 minutes. And I'm just gonna prep the canvas. I'm just gonna mist it, take some oxide black, mix it with a little bit of Prussian blue right here on the canvas and just spread it around. I'll do the sides as well, just so that the canvas is sort of prepped for what I'm doing. And yes, of course, this is the polyfiber paper here and on my ironing board. You would have thought like I used my ironing board as the inspiration for color. <laughs> I didn't, but I don't know, kind of a quinky dink. So this is my iron on a cotton setting. So it's actually pretty hot. And I'm just going over top of the parchment paper. I, you, know, you don't wanna to touch the actual iron to the polyfiber paper. And I'm just gonna keep checking it and ironing over top of it until I get it to kind of crinkle up into something that I want. enough and now I'm going to cut up the polyfiber paper I want it in smaller pieces all over the canvas and I'm just going to use some gel medium at first to attach this onto the canvas in you know random spots yeah I don't know again just kind of winging it <music> I kind of want to blend the edges of the polyfiber paper into the canvas. So actually I'm just going to use some fine modeling paste around the edges. Plus it's going to help the ends kind of stick because the polyfiber paper is relatively thick. So you need something with a little bit of substance to kind of grab it and hang on to it. So, cause you can see, right, it's kind of sliding around on the gel medium. So now I've decided that I'm actually going to take some of the modeling paste and actually physically attach it to the back of all of the polyfiber paper Again, to just give it a little bit of an extra oomph to get it to stick down. And you're gonna see that that wasn't enough either. And here's something else I'm experimenting with. This is actually parchment paper that I colored with the sea monster green, just cause I wanted to see like, what does that do? Like, does the paint stick to it? Doesn't it stick to it? How does that work? And I'm applying it with the gel medium. Yeah, I'm just kind of throwing everything on this canvas, creating like different types of texture to see kind of, you know, I don't know how it's gonna work out all together. Cause I wasn't hundred percent sure. And then in my infinite wisdom, like I didn't have enough texture going on. I thought I would use that uh, Tim Holtz collage paper. Yeah. Thought I'd, you know, throw that on there too. Again, utilizing the acrylic gel medium. And then if that wasn't enough just yet, <laughs> I got some cardboard. Yep, I peeled it a little bit so that it shows like the corrugated look of it. 
and I'm just going to apply that randomly on the canvas as well. You know, I'm taking this one as an opportunity, whether I love how this thing turns out or not, doesn't really matter. It was more about all the different types of texture and different mediums that I could use and see what I could possibly create. Now that I've got all this attached, I kind of am struggling getting the polyfiber paper to really adhere. So I'm thinking I'm going to flip it upside down and put some weight on the back. But before, oh, that's not a good idea. Hold on a second. Before I do that, maybe I should lay some parchment paper out because I'm afraid that if I just flip it upside down that as it dries, maybe it'll stick to the silicone mat. I really don't know. So I'm just going to lay out some parchment paper here. And then I'm going to MacGyver this thing by flipping the canvas upside down. I'm going to put a bunch of weight on the back side. Yeah, a bunch of tubes of paint and whatever else I can find on my art table to hold it down and let it dry overnight. Okay, so welcome back. This is now the next day. And some of you have seen me do this before. I take saran wrap, I put it beside the canvas and I mix paint on that before I apply it to the canvas. I mean, sometimes I apply paint on directly onto the canvas, but in this case, I'm not going to. This is just gesso. I'm gonna gesso kind of over top of just about everything to kind of, I don't know, I don't know. Somebody had asked if I could teach them. I don't know how to teach anybody anything because I just kind of fly by the seat of my pants most often. So I'm not really qualified other than to, you know, explain everything that's in my head. So this is satin glazing liquid. I don't know, I'm using this for the first time. I'm gonna add it to the prison pour. Prison pour tends to dry relatively quickly. So I'm hoping that this is gonna add like to the life of the drying cycle so that I can use it longer before it starts to, you know, get a little bit hard on me. So again, this is kind of creating, I don't know what you wanna call it, some cohesion. This is all the same colors that I originally used to create the poly paper color and the parchment paper. So, yeah, I don't, again, I don't know how to explain this to anybody. Like I really try like to do these voiceovers so that it makes any sense. And I can see now why maybe other people just put the whole thing to music and not explain anything. Cause I mean, really it's just some random shit in my head that I'm just kind of doing here thinking that it's the next step, logical, makes sense, doesn't make sense. If it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. So this is, uh, yeah, I can't see it. So you're just gonna take my word. This paint's gray. <laughs> Yeah, because I'm going to add some darkness and some shadowing in certain areas. I'm going to blend with my fingers and do whatever feels right at the time. And what I also love is like taking the paintbrush and kind of skimming across the texture. I think it, I don't know, creates something like kind of cool looking. I do like to blend. This is now my new favorite brush. It really does well on blending. I don't know if it's because it's got a flat edge to it. I don't even kind of brush this is. I just randomly grabbed it. I think because it was pink and I thought it was kind of cool. And I'm just going to use it. And it's now my new go-to brush. You can see, I just, you know, if I don't like something, I grab anything, my finger, paper towel, whatever, blend, swipe, I don't know, color, whatever, whatever, I don't know, comes natural or feels intuitive. That's kind of just what you do. Anyway, I'm just rambling. I really don't know why. Probably nobody will need to listen to my ramblings on. taking more inspiration from my ironing board I decided to take some of this olive green light and I'm just going to randomly dabble very very lightly at first because I'm not sure if I'm going to love this or not on the canvas so I'm kind of I don't know we'll see what happens so as I'm staring at this thing I'm like this is way too I don't know sea foam blue <laughs> and I'm not loving it so I am going to add um, some more of the green, but I'm going to mix the light olive green and the dark olive green to kind of create an in-between color that I like better. The other one was looked too like, I don't know, brightish green and I wasn't so thrilled with that. So I like the darker green. And I'm just going to add some more of the Payne's Gray around, darken up some areas and kind of figure out again, what I'm doing, I would love to be able to give you like a full tutorial and explain all this to you, but it is so random as it's happening. Um, and just random thoughts, like for instance here, like I thought the blues kind of all needed to join together. It kind of looked too just jointed and all over the place. So 
I'm going over the bare spots that were more of the white gesso and kind of blending it a little bit better. And now I'm taking my woody, which I love, which sounds completely inappropriate, and just and adding random markings everywhere, like boxing in some of the texture, because I think that looks kind of interesting at the time anyway. And now, of course, I want to add drips because, again, there's not enough visual interest in this thing. So I want to kind of take your eye like on a journey through the piece. So if I could explain that to anybody, I don't even know if I can, but it's kind of the plan, at least at this point. Before I call it like officially done. <laughs> 